For more on common things to invest, talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's set terms only. The investment talk today will be Ethereum ticket ETH. So it's my second posting as of today. Respect to recording time of 1.06 p.m. on Eastern Time, Ethereum coin trading $3,365, down about 1.44% so far. Respect to overall crypto market is relatively trading on a sideways fashion, right? With some sell-off earlier today, but subsequently normalized as the day, you know, obviously progresses from there, right? And, you know, the sell-off that we saw earlier today is mainly driven by that Christine Lagarde news. Uh, the ECB, the European Central Bank's president, issued a suspicious warning over a selections of cryptocurrencies regarding Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, BNB, XRP, Solana, and Dogecoin after the huge price explosions, right? And I will say the, you know, the explosion has been more prominently, you know, led by the altcoin, if you may, right? Per my depictions yesterday on the six specific altcoin, respectively have surged over 5,000% year to date. And one specific coin has even surged about 11,000% year to date, which is definitely raises some eyebrows, right? How could that be with this, you know, large manipulations, right? So obviously with this negative news coming from someone that's uh, relatively reputable and respected uh, in the European nation, Christine Lagarde, subsequently drives himself off across the market, right? But it subsequently rebounded back uh, to, you know, hover back to a more of a normalized level. And Ethereum is currently trading $3,365, trading on a sideways fashion, basically, you know, testing the resistance levels that would have been, um, you know, basically bouncing off of for like 12 times so far in the last, I would say, a uh, couple weeks so far, right? And some of the news I've been picking up ever since, you know, my first posting this morning, I would say we have some other positive news, uh, but some opposite news as well. So Bazinga two hours ago talked about cryptocurrencies. Trader Lark Davis says that Ethereum poised for 190% rally on its way to over $10,000. So this is um, a, a crypto trader and influencer uh, on YouTube, uh, something that I frankly don't know. I'm, I don't really follow other crypto uh, traders or influencers on YouTube, nor on like TikTok or Instagram, if you may. I just do what I do. I basically read the charts and read the news, if you may. That's what I do. I'm not a wizard, nor am I a clairvoyant, if you may. I just read the news, right? It seems like he is saying something uh, with his videos uh, talking about, you know, reaching $10,000 in the near term, which is, you know, a logical depiction, but in terms of the time frame, that's something we have to verify a little bit, right? So it's a speculation that, you know, um, you know, with some technical analysis, obviously, but, you know, with respect to the search, like when is the timing for it? I think, you know, for in the next 12 months, that's possible based on my technical analysis, right? So I think Lark Davis's, um, you know, depictions or his uh, technical analysis can be a good frame of reference if you are interested in learning from different analysts perspective uh, versus our perspective collectively, right? Another one coming from another uh, an analyst, but this is uh, an institutional analyst, uh, JP Morgan, my old job, my first job on Wall Street, basically, saying that Ether should reach 55% lower and is facing tough competition from Solana and other blockchain, JP Morgan strate uh, strategist says. So based on the article that I've been reading so far, uh, it's basically uh, an article that's released by Nikolau Panagin. Stoko, I can't even say his last name. I think it's a Greek last name. <laughs> it's a really, really um, long one that I'm just not good at pronunciation. But based on what he's talking about is saying that Ether's fair value, based on his technical analysis, should reach about $1,500 based on the measures of network activities. And with respect to the depictions that he has calculated, with his uh, Fibonacci's levels, with his uh, RSI MACD calculations, it seems like it should, you know, drop roughly by 55% uh, lower than the Friday's price level of around like $3,470 per uh, Ethereum token. So we are below that level at the moment. So obviously with this news uh, coming from you know, the market strategist, um, and he's a senior person at JP Morgan leading, you know, he's more of like an economist, uh, understand the whole market spectrum. So is he really like an expert in cryptocurrencies? I think based on my read on his profile and his um, experience so far, 
I would say is uh, is interesting, uh, but I, I don't know enough about him for me to have uh, you know an opinion on. But something to 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 know, something to reference off of, right? I think fifteen hundred uh, can be a relatively drastic one. So we have a very you know type of uh, how would you say polarized news today. We have one coming from a crypto um, YouTuber saying that we'll rally one hundred ninety percent coming up to hit ten k. We have JP Morgan from Nikola saying that we'll go back down by 55% to like $1,500 in near term. So which way is it? I, I, you know, frankly, we do not know, do we care either. We are in the frames of reference by looking at the technical analysis. We believe what we see in front of us because ultimately we have to understand that with respect to these, you know, articles or media affectation, what is their psychological incentives around why they're saying what they're saying so you could read it with a grain of salt it's informative but you have to stay within your personal um you know frame of reference right because you have your own personal tolerance you don't know how other people are thinking or their perspective either so in the more neutral side of the house uh just looking at more of the news so far uh, and I'm loading on the on my website. Apologies for the delay. Uh, the next news is really just another regurgitation news. Talk about again, like some of the altcoins that's been performing really, really well, right? With respect to the six altcoins that I talked about yesterday, it seems like there's more regurgitation news. Talk about how altcoin is going to be outperforming the stable coins, if you may, right? And they're categorizing Bitcoin and Ethereum as um. And even Dogecoin as a form of a stable coin in some articles. So another, um, you know, repeating news, if you may, uh, something that's more speculative, nothing really substantive. But I think in the in the last six hours so far, the real substantive news that will have some, you know, direct market power. I would say three collectively. One is the Christine Lagarde news, obviously his her negative depictions around it. Secondly, is with respect to Lars Davis, with respect to his depictions on the hundred uh, hundred ninety percent rally on his way to ten k, and the J P Morgan news on the negative fifty five percent drop that we will see for Ethereum to hit fifteen hundred going forward. So going back to the technical analysis, we are still in the like a bearish pressure at the moment. We are crossing down. We have the negative apex at the moment. Our size is still that 68, uh, 48.40 out of 70. So we're in the mid level. We're not overbought. We're not oversold. Um, but MACD doesn't look good. We are still crossing downward. And with the 22nd, 23rd FOMC meeting coming up, on top of the Christine Lagarde, we are seeing some foreshadow around like the central banks and the Federal Reserves on both the European side, but also from the domestic side in the US. How are they, you know, enforcing some infrastructure regulatory type of uh, dynamics that could subsequently be counterproductive to the surge of crypto assets as a whole going forward, right? Um, I think, as a, you know, in a long term perspective, it's good because we need compliance regulations to avoid any fraudulent activities and also protect your money, right? Because it's your hard earned money that you invest into crypto assets. But at the same time, you know, when you are, you know, marginalizing or squeezing uh, by putting some regulatory dynamics around it, um, that could be a form of tax implications, that could be a form of uh, commission fees cut or whatever whatever um these you know that could subsequently hinder the profit margin respectively right for obviously the exchange platforms like coinbase or binance but also for us subsequently as they increase the commission fees or transaction costs you know per transactions that could subsequently cut into our our profit you know, that this is just a direct correlation effects that could be, you know, more of a domino effect that goes through from the top all the way to the bottom to us public investors, right? So something to be mindful of, um, and to stay within the frame of reference, we are still with, you know, trading on a sideways fashion with the news that we've heard so far. So I think the likelihood of actually going back down to 3,150 would be a ideal level dollar cost average, right? right? 3,000 would be a next level to dollar cost average, right? But I think 3,150, just like, I think start incurring some risk exposure wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe 10 to 15% of your cash holding if you're starting new. 2,700, 2,450, those are the levels I would be buying at, right? Or 1,500 if JP Morgan 
you know, prediction comes true, right? But again, with a grain of salt, we don't know, despite how reputable JP Morgan is, right? And with respect to the uh, psychological frames of reference, we're still within the anxiety and denial stage. Something we have to be mindful of, right? Uh, that, you know, despite how you know, mixed signal we are seeing across the market. Some day we up like 3%, some day we down 3%, some day we up 5%, next day we down 1%. It's like, what are we doing? It's supposed to be happening. We are basically oscillating on a sideways fashion, contemplating, being anxious, denying what we're doing right now, right? Despite all the negative pressure that if JP Morgan is true, we're going to hit some panic and we're going to hit the capitulation and anger. And that's when we're going to see like the 1750 to 1500 again, right? But ultimately, in the risk averse perspective, the frames of reference at the current stage with the with the things that we know so far, right? 3,000, 2,750, 2,450 would be the level I would be buying at right now. It's the logical level in the risk, most risk averse perspective. And I would say I'm a relatively conservative investor. But if you bought it now, let's say you just want to get with the formal feelings, 9,800 is not a bad idea going forward in the next 12 months. You know, by September next year, we should technically hit this, right? Or per Lark Davis, he's saying something around like $10,000, right? 190% rally from here, right? And that could give you a north of 3.5 times your money from here. So hopefully this is helpful. It's my second posting on Sunday. Uh, I'm gonna go out and go biking today. It's a beautiful day in New York City. It's sunny and it's uh, not too hot, not too cool either. So I'm gonna do my whole uh, Manhattan borough thing. Probably go hit Midtown first and go all the way to, to Harlem and then bike all the way to Battery Park, which is like by like Wall Street, which is downtown. And then bike all the way back to Midtown again and go home from there. And I should think that should take me like maybe three hours. Of uh, just like joy ride, not like going crazy fast, right? Just like enjoying the weather, enjoying the the beautiful scenery in New York City as well. So hopefully this is helpful, and really appreciate you for dropping by. If you give me a shout, I'm gonna be on my phone anyways. Despite biking, I'm always responsive, and hope you guys have a great weekend as well. Take care. Bye.